This video is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Mm. Bel caffè macchiato, passa la paura. You see, I love Japan, Japanese culture, Japanese language, Japanese martial arts. I first started practicing Shotokan Karate, and then when I moved to Japan, I actually changed it to Kyokushin Karate, and I started practicing that one, considering both styles collectively for about six years. Then I had three years of Kendo and a tiny bit of Katori Shintori. I mean, there are people out there that are really what I would call full-time martial artists, people that actually dedicate their lives into the practice of a specific martial art, or sometimes even a set of martial arts, so people that are actual 100% fighters. I'm not that. I would consider myself to be maybe something in the lines of, I'm not sure, a part-time martial artist. I'm saying all of this just to say that I'm not the two-go guy when it comes to uh, martial arts and combat, but I do have an overall understanding of Japanese culture. I have lived in Japan for four years, I have practiced martial arts in Japan, but one thing that I have made clear on this channel is that I'm absolutely against bullshit. And I've always been like that. I've always had a realistic expectation when it came to what I wanted from my martial arts. When I went into Kendo, I knew that it wasn't Sengoku Jidai Samurai Combat. When I practiced Kyokushin Karate, I knew that I only knew a little bit of stand-up fight, and so if you put me against an experienced grappler, I would be down. And there is no shame in being honest about what you can do and can't do with a specific martial art. Even though I love traditional martial arts, and, and they are my favorite, I love Japanese martial arts, I have a huge respect for MMA, because people who have the courage to step into the, whether it be the octagon or the ring, whatever you want to call it, so the same goes to professional boxers, they have my respect. With that out of the way, today we're going to focus on Aikido, because I think it's one of those martial arts that gets a really bad reputation, and on this channel I like clarifying things and uh, debunking myths. And when it comes to the war on Aikido, you really have two factions on the internet. You've got people that say that Aikido is a complete waste of time, it's the most useless martial art, it doesn't work, it's bullshit, you're wasting your time, that black belt means nothing. And on the other side of the front, you've got fanatic Aikido practitioners that say no, Aikido is the most lethal martial art of all and the only reason why we don't step onto the octagon, the only reason why we don't fight in MMA is because our moves are not to incapacitate the opponent, our moves are lethal, we don't want to kill people and that's why we don't fight in an MMA tournament. Both are bullshit. The first statement is bullshit because it's extremely misinformed and today I'm gonna hopefully inform people on to what Aikido is, what historical environment it was created in and what it actually tries to achieve with its goals. But the second one is also bullshit because it's as fantasy as the Lord of the Rings. And I will get into this in details after a word from our sponsor. But now I'd like to take a moment to mention the kind sponsor that made this video possible, Bespoke. If you don't know what Bespoke is, then you are missing out. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering really amazing boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. And what's really cool is that 90% of the products in the boxes come from small businesses, many of which are here in the USA. Say for example the knife that you get in the Terra box made by Bare Bones in Salt Lake City. One thing that might surprise you is that Bespoke is free to join. Every month Bespoke introduces the members to cool new products ranging from barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, real useful stuff. You fill in a preference quiz and the system will select new boxes every month for you. It's great in terms of value because the contents of each box have a retail price of over $70 but you get them for $45. Before the box is shipped you get a preview, you can see what's inside and decide one, if you like it, great, you keep it. If you don't like it, you can swap for another box or you can just skip the monthly box and pay nothing. You only pay for what you want. The guys at Bespoke sent me three boxes, so let me show you what I've got. The first box I got is called Split and it contained a hatchet made of a cast 1055 carbon steel blade with rear hammer. The handle is made of beechwood. It has a polyester sheath for safety. Do I love this hatchet? I mean, it's my first hatchet. To be honest, usually I handle swords, but this, it's nice, it has a nice, balance but most importantly it's sturdy this thing is not gonna break. The second box I got is Weekender. It contains this awesome bag that I've been using to put the props for my videos. I mean, to be honest, this is something, it's sort of an upgrade that I should have done a, a while ago. I mean, I've been carrying helmets and stuff in plastic bags, but this is much more durable. Cotton canvas, it has a metal hardware and reinforcement frame, thick leather handles. Last but not least, I received a box called Copper. These are beautiful, bright supplies for your home bar. To be honest, the only reason why I got this one is because I am obsessed with metals 
also when I saw the shiny beautiful copper it looks absolutely beautiful and that's why I wanted it in my kitchen I'm mostly using this one because as you know I love the looks of metal and I'm just gonna keep it there to look good but I know that for people who actually do make like Moscow Mule and these kind of drinks then this is a great stuff to work with at a very low price the cups are made of 100% pure copper and they of course have food grade interior lacquer and this ice breaking wooden mallet that you can use you know to break ice while you're making your you know what I might actually change my mind and start making some uh, some drinks because this stuff is cool to get a 20% off your first box click the link in the description below and enter metatron20 at checkout or use this URL code and big thanks to bespoke for sponsoring my video comments such as oh I practice Aikido I've been practicing it for 10 years I've been in a million street fights and I kick the shit out of everyone people that say this have completely misunderstood what Aikido is because if you practice Aikido in order to kick the shit out of the people that you disagree with and you get into street fights all the time you should not be practicing Aikido that is not what Aikido is about. First of all, we're talking about Budo, so one of those sort of modern martial arts that were created after the Meiji reform or Meiji restoration of 1868, such as Judo, Karate Do, Kendo, or the martial arts that have the Do, so the Kanji that means way, meaning inner path, as opposed to Koryu, which are the old styles, more of a sort of militaristic tradition of martial arts, such as Jujutsu, Kenjutsu, Yaijutsu, etc. Whenever we think of a martial art, we imagine it to be a particular strategy regarding combat systems. But just saying that all martial arts boil down to sophisticated systems of controlled violence is incomplete. We could say that most martial arts share these following concepts. Combat, morals, discipline, athletics, aesthetics. But not all martial arts put all of their priority into the combat section. If you think Aikido is just a system that teaches you how to flip people, you have misunderstood what Aikido is. Aikido is a philosophy, it's harmony, it's expression and communication, it's inner improvement, it contains meditation, it contains mind expanding, and in its very nature, it's non-competitive. So if you think that Aikido is the ultimate killing system, you're wrong. But another thing that is important to understand is that there isn't one Aikido. Just out of my mind, I can think of 16 different styles, and even though the the main style that generally speaking th people think of is the one that is very flowy and looks very aesthetic. There are some styles and definitely a smaller number of dojos that do have a certain level of competition. Today we're focusing on the actual flowy, more popular kind of Aikido that people have in mind whenever they think of Aikido. Does it work? Is it functional or not? If you put an Aikido practitioner against an MMA practitioner, they're both pros, no rules, fight, my money's on the MMA guy. And yet there are great guys like this guy here, who is a bouncer and has used effectively Aikido techniques in real fights. I don't think it's fair to Aikido practitioners to tell them that their martial art is bullshit. Not everyone practices Aikido because they want to learn self-defense on the streets. If people want to practice Aikido because it's their way to experience the Japanese style and, and dive themselves into the culture and have a sort of more of a physical way to experience philosophy, let them do it. But for those who want to use it as a self-defense martial art, then it's important, I think, to be realistic about it. Some techniques are based on real combat because they do come from a very ancient tradition, which was the Aikijutsu tradition that goes all the way back to the samurai. So some really good practitioners, not everyone, not every Aikido practitioner, but some really good practitioners that have got strength, size and speed can pull them off. But there is no magic about it. Do practice Aikido if you like it. But if you're more into the functional aspect of it rather than the cultural and philosophical one, then I would pair it with something else. In the majority of styles of Aikido, again, not all of them, but in the majority of styles of Aikido, the way the techniques are taught is that the attack is predefined, the attacker stops and waits for the other person to retaliate and complete their move, and there is basically no live resistance, there is no way to actually spar. Which again, for the philosophical version of Aikido, if you do it for that, it's fine. But if you're doing it for self-defense, then I would strongly advise you to actually spa and try the techniques out. I'm not telling you to ditch your martial art, I'm telling you to perhaps integrate it with something else, just like I was honest about my karate training that if I really want to be a complete fighter I need to integrate it with some BJJ, just to say one. I think the best way to look at this, the best example is the following. Imagine boxing without sparring, 
No matches, no fighting, no sparring, just punching the air. Then take a no sparring boxer and put him against someone who does regular boxing with all the full content sparring and experience that this guy has had with real fighting. Who do you think is gonna win? Aikido is a treasured form of art, so let's not just disrespect it, but let's also be realistic when it comes to what we expect from this style. Why are we practicing it and what do we want from it? Aikido also trains with uh, Bokuto or Bokken, so the uh, wooden katana. Is it good to practice Aikido if what you're interested in is s Japanese swordsmanship but there is there are no Kenjutsu styles around like schools? Is it still good as a basis to practice a few years of Aikido in order to learn you know the techniques and the movement and the guards and then eventually go into Kenjutsu? My answer is no. Aikido sword training every time I've heard a Yaido sensei or a Kenjutsu sensei speak about the way they handle the katana and the Bokuto and the Bokken in Aikido they always say oh they're all wrong we need to you know everything is wrong the grip is wrong the guard is wrong we should sort of rebuild everything from from scratch that's what people say they might not say it publicly but they do say it I've heard it with my own ears does that mean that when you're learning the the way I you know the Aikido uh, katas or moves with a katana you're wasting your time no because you're learning Aikido and within Aikido they are fine. Kendo is also very different from Kenjutsu and I came from Kendo and went into Kenjutsu and there were a lot of things that I had to change like even the grip was considered wrong within the world and the sphere of Kenjutsu. My footwork was completely different. Kendo footwork is actually based on a specific style of Kenjutsu but not on Katori Shintoryu so when I went into Katori Shintoryu the footwork was completely different. But when you choose Aikido you should choose it because you like Aikido and you want to learn Aikido. After the Japanese lost World War II, their focus on militaristic martial arts became a problem. It sort of sparked memories of the nuclear bombs. So extreme patriotism and extreme militaristic behaviors were condemned in Japan after World War II. And that is probably one of the reasons why a very free-flowing martial art of peace and harmony, such as Aikido, uh, flourished. And we'll have to wait a good 20 to 24 years until the return of very hard and combat-oriented martial arts such as Kyokushin Karate, which was founded by Masaru Yama in 1964. Japan went into a very specific historical moment, and that explains why some styles became more popular than others. Also because the image of the samurai, we also have to remember, that was heavily used of militaristic propaganda during World War II by the Japanese government. I'd like to also touch upon another thing. What is a black belt? Because that's another huge misconception that people have. When you have a black belt, you're not a master of that style. It means you have achieved all the basics and you're now starting to learn the actual martial art. So even though in the West, a black belt is kind of seen as, wow, it's the achievement, it's what I want. Now I've reached my black belt and now I, you know, I'm a professional of this art. In the East, that's not really how they look at it. A black belt is a beginning point because it takes many, many, many years to master any style of combat, whether they have colored belts or not. All right, number ones, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video, but please let me know what do you think? Have you practiced Aikido? Are you interested in Aikido? Do you think I got something wrong? And perhaps you want to correct me and help me understand more how Aikido works. Or are you an MMA practitioner? Do you think we should see a few more Aikido techniques into the octagon? Or is that not something that you think would ever work? Well, let me know in the comments below. Thanks again to the sponsor of this video, Bespoke, for being kind and sponsoring the video. Check out the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching, and remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.